up. My friends, it's about time I took some of my own advice and got out and rode something new. I'm up in Redding, California today, the Swayze Recreation Area, gonna ride some Redding mountain bike trails. I've been wanting to get up here for years, and the best part about wanting to go somewhere for years, and the longer it takes, the better the trails get, the more trails there are. It's a win-win. You just gotta procrastinate a little bit, and then it gets even better. I was at the Sacramento airport a couple years ago at the baggage carousel. They had this big old TV screen that had this Redding mountain biking ad playing over and over. Every couple minutes, it'd be like, come to Redding, come enjoy the trails. It's great mountain biking. So you know the city is behind it. They know the power of mountain bike tourism. And uh, it takes a lot of people to bring a mountain bike trail system to life. And when you have the city behind it, oh, that's such a good thing. As you may have noticed, the old Ripmo 2 is getting a little bit clunky and a little too loud over the past couple months or so. Man, when I first got the bike, it was all dialed and silent. And so I'm taking the thing back to the bike shop very soon. I've got a couple new parts I want to throw on. And uh, we're going to give it a slight light overhaul hopefully to get back to the silence that we all know and love i can't be having no clanky crappy bike once again in true bkxc style i'm just winging it i looked at trail forks i put together a route i think it's about 17 miles 3,000 feet of climbing two big descents that's what i'm looking for big climbs big descents the Reading Trail Alliance does all the great work out here. And they had this really nice sign right at the beginning of the trail saying who they are, what they do, and how you can help. A QR code where you could scan and donate. Just a place to look up for volunteering. They are doing it right. It's such a perfect little sign. How is it possible that something that simple can be that powerful, but you don't see it at every single mountain bike trail network around the world? probably because they say, yeah, you could put a flyer on the kiosk and nobody looks at the kiosk. <laughs> I saw the kiosk over there, but I'm looking at trail forks and I think I know where I'm going. Forget the kiosk. Wow, look at these wildflowers. Beautiful, I've never seen anything like that. As you might be able to tell, this area has gone through a bit of a transformation recently. In 2019, a big old wildfire roared through here. And then in 2020, there was another big fire out here. I don't know if it was actually on these trails again or not. It's so hard to keep track of all the different fires every single year. It's crazy. Those wildflowers remind me of a story my grandma told me about World War II in London and the Blitz after the Germans bombed the hell out of London those big craters churned up all this soil and these wildflowers popped up that they totally thought were extinct. And so it was this whole rebirth after World War II and you know, out of destruction, life can, can grow out a new escalator. Wow, that was quick. Okay, we're on it, we're climbing. And by we, I mean me. I got this place all to myself. Monday morning at the office. This is definitely the time of year to come out and ride these trails, as long as they're dry. When they get wet, they get muddy and the trails get very damaged. So stay off them when they're wet, but oh man, the temperature right now, so perfect. Spring is around the corner. Then when summer hits in Redding, it's uh, hellacious. So <laughs> I don't recommend it, but if you happen to be in the area, go for it. Just bring a ton of water and leave early or ride late, whatever it is. It's, this is the kind of place that is 100 degree days every day during the entire summer kind of place. The sweat is flowing, the gloves are on. I don't think the climb is over, but <laughs> I'm looking forward to this little bit. Yeah. Okay, nice little split here. Mule Pass Mountain, I'm gonna do that later. Oh wow, you can get to Whiskey Town from here? Ha, that's awesome. I did a couple different races at Whiskey Town years and years ago when me and my brother first started riding. One of my fondest memories is seeing my first bald eagle 
at Whiskey Town Lake. Oh, wow. I did not even realize that this whole thing connects into mega, mega mileage. Whew. Not today. Uh-oh, I'm second guessing myself now. <laughs> I think I might actually take on the Terminator Trail instead of Mule Ridge because this Terminator is actually a downhill and the Mule Ridge, I don't know how good of a downhill that is. It might just be more of a climbing trail. Ooh, we're doing it on the fly here and I will get back to this point. I'm gonna climb this whole thing again so I can get back to Mule Mountain Summit. Okay, let's do Terminator instead. Steep, rocky, rough. I like that. I've been wearing these seven IDP Sam Hill knee pads and they've been pretty good so far. I've had a little bit of slippage, but it's to be expected if you don't have the real hardcore Velcro straps. Very comfortable on the climbs and the descents. Whoa. And I did have a couple crashes at Rockville on that last video and I don't remember my knees really hurting. Loose and awkward so far. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> oh, it looks sharp. <laughs> wow. Rocking and rolling for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hey, the bike sounded pretty good actually. I did take it to Frame Up, Frame Up Bikes, my local bike shop. And they messed with a couple things, but huh, maybe they hit it right. <laughs> That's an ugly turn. Oh man, full face. <laughs> They said my derailleur was a little bit out of adjustment, so maybe that was what was clanging and banging around. But there's always room to make it more quiet. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, I hope that wasn't the whole thing. <laughs> wow, you can really see that devastation from the fire right here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> cool. Ah, you can see where everybody goes off the trail right there. <laughs> nice, I like that little baby flow right there. That was cool. Okay, nice little first loop. The parking lot's actually right there. Totally filled. <laughs> I was the only car there. Now an hour later or whatever, it's totally filled up. So let's go out and do another loop. Where I live down in Vallejo, the green grass does not last very long before the sun bakes everything and kills everything. I'm imagining here that the green grass lasts even shorter. <laughs> we got two weeks of green grass and then it's gone. This was only a three hour drive from my house this morning. I got up early and I'm like, you know what? I've had this one on my list forever. Well, let's go get it. Let's go see what it's all about. Got up here about 9.45, left the house 6.45, so perfect. I hate getting in the mode of not doing stuff. Inertia is terrible. You know, I'm like, okay, I got my trip coming up in a couple weeks, let's get some stuff done. I've been doing all kinds of stuff to the house, cleaning up, 
getting stuff situated. The house has never been better, but it also means that I'm like out of the groove. But the only way to get into the groove is to do it. Just get out and go. Man, they have some good infrastructure, some good picnic tables, bathrooms at the bottom, all that stuff to make your ride comfortable. The views out here are actually really good, but it's a very hazy day, and of course the GoPro does no justice. But you can see Mount Lassen from here, which is a national park, and also Mount Brokoff. And 500,000 years ago, it all used to be connected by one giant volcano called Mount Tehama. And I'm not sure if Mount Tehama just blew up and erupted, or if it just was eroded away over the past 500,000 years or whatever, but that was all just one giant 11,000 foot volcano, and now it's kind of splintered off into separate little volcanoes. Snack of the day, Aussie Bites. Man, if you've never had these from Costco, excellent with a couple of dark chocolate bark thins thrown in. Oh, baby. All right, refueled, back in the saddle. Big, big climb coming now. <laughs> it's like I'm almost at the bottom. Okay, this is where I got on the escalator previously. Now we're climbing. This climbing trail is really well built. This is like big league style trail building. Nice and slow, undulating, gets you to the top in one piece, not broken in half. I'm still breaking in my new shoes, the Ride Concepts Hellraiser, Hellcat, Hell something, Hell expensive. <laughs> 160 bucks for a pair of shoes is, uh, whew, it's tough, but I went for it. The Kestrel Lace, the 510 Kestrel Lace, that's what I've been wearing for years now, and I just never think about my feet. It's a, it's a great product. I've enjoyed them, but you gotta test out different stuff every once in a while just to make sure. Probably time I updated my everything I wear mountain biking page on my website. I did update my GoPro website. If you just Google BKXC GoPro or BKXC GoPro settings, the first thing that pops up will be all my GoPro gear and affiliate links. So if you buy something, I get a little kickback. Okay, now we're back to that, that meeting point, and I'm going to head back other this way. I'm going to wing it. I'm not even going to look at the map. Oh man, now I'm thinking about that first bald eagle I saw and how that was probably 15 generations ago. <laughs> the great, 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 great grandpa or grandma. I think the same thing about the hummingbirds in my backyard. I've lived in my house for 10 years now and there's just always hummingbirds in the backyard. It's like, are these the, the originals? How long do they live? Are they migrating? Are they coming? Are they going? So many questions. Oh, I love it. The more you get out into the outdoors, the more wondrous it becomes, the more layers you peel back and just think about all this stuff. It's happening all around us, out of sight. But every once in a while, you get lucky enough to glimpse it when you're out here. All right, I gotta get out Peak Finder and find out what that mountain is right there. It's called Shasta Valley. Never heard of it before. 6,000 feet high. I got lucky right there with the Peak Finder app. I love the thing, but almost half the time I'll be out in like some remote place and I bring open the app and it's like, you require a, a 90 megabyte update. And it's like, ah, I just wanna see what the name of the mountain is right there. And you don't have cell service and you never use the thing when you're just out and about in your normal, normal day when it would actually update on its own. So luckily I have a little bit of cell service right there and it didn't need to update and I could actually see the mountain. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Oh, cool. Whoa. Oh, slippy S turn. It's cold over here on the north face. <laughs> Let me get in that sun again. This is actually pretty neat. It's just a lot of mileage and it's pretty flat but it's like weird backcountry zen. Just all alone, you can focus and think. 
pretty worth it. And this might be the end right here. Let's see. All right. Okay, now we hit the summit trail out and back. Get to the tippity top. Oh man, this is turning into quite the climb, which I am very, very excited about. <laughs> the more time I'm climbing, the more time I'm descending. What, are they, like 10 to 1 ratio or whatever it is, but <laughs> it's gonna be good. Give me more. Oh. <sighs> Let's take on a nice big downhill here. Mule Mountain, straight into Snail Trail. Whoa! <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I think it's about 1,300 feet of descent. Get your head around. Oh, I remember that on the way up. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so loose right there. I hear those brakes engage. I think the bike's being pretty quiet, but this is pretty smooth. Oh. <laughs> engage! Wow, that's nasty. Oh god. <laughs> The sun is poking through just bad enough, <laughs> flashing my eyes. Ah, oh, this is cool. Oh, wow. Time for a new front tire. <laughs> I think I've been running this thing for a year. <laughs> uh, drifty. Oh. <sighs> Snail trail. Whoa, big old double. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> slow. That's why it said slow. <laughs> I've got to find the perfect time when it's not too wet, not too dry. Probably two days <laughs> after the rain. Uh, or two days total. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Whoa! Feel that top layer just slipping. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that was moist. Interesting, different terrain down here, a little more dirt, less rock. The sun is at the perfect angle to blind me when I'm going for some of these little pumps. Whoa. Flow for the whole family. 
I guess there are some jagged rocks here and there, but this is really nice. I showed a picture of my shoes on Instagram and everybody made fun of me for having the cleats so far forward. I thought you're supposed to have your heels down. Maybe I'll have to move my cleats back a little bit, test that out. Never bothered me for a second on the Kestrel lace. <laughs> oh, nice little jumps. Okay, so I'm gonna hang right here at the end of the snail trail and then there's a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> totally different terrain. <laughs> I'm not the first to go into that ditch. Okay, so I see that left trail because this is not a trail. <laughs> That's funny. This is the way. Okay, now there's no one in the parking lot. What the heck? <laughs> First loop, when I finished, the parking lot was totally full. Now I come back and it's just me and Yakima. Okay, second loop in the bag. I'm gonna have a little more water. I'm gonna have another snack and then I'm gonna head over to the Enticer Trail. It's a big, bad bike park style jump trail. And we all know I'm a very beginner level with the jumps, but according to Trail Forks, people really love the trail. They say it's worth checking out even if you can't hit big gaps. So let's roll over there. Let's go see it. This trail's down the hill a little bit on this fire road, and hopefully I'm not going to lose a bunch of elevation because <laughs> then at the end I got to climb back up. I ditched the big bag though, just the hip pack now. Nice and light. It's going to make me jump twice as high and twice as far. Okay, Owen's run. Let's climb it. 400 footies. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I was on it. I just stalled. Definitely looks like uh, it's meant to go the other way. A little slow there. <laughs> oh, wow. I have arrived. Every trail has a nice little handmade sign. Really cool. My goal to work on my jumps this year for real, actually take a good amount of time, get a coach, Rich Drew from the Ride Series says he wants to help me when I get to Arkansas, and I think that would be really, really good. Whoa. Just so much pressure to be like, okay, we're gonna make a video, and you're gonna learn how to jump. <laughs> Something I've tried to do so many times. It puts so much pressure. Be like, ugh. Ooh, got the double, double black on the left, giant gaps, okay. We got the blue over here. The cool thing about Bentonville, all kinds of practice jumps, just littered all throughout everywhere. So at least I will have good, yeah, place to practice. <laughs> yeah, it will be a magical thing when I can ride these trails as intended. It just, uh, it's tough to have that skill set missing. Oh man, that was over quick. Every tool in the toolbox just takes deliberate practice to develop. And hopefully, I'll be able to make some time, make it happen. Or I could keep wishing, <laughs> and we all know how far wishing gets us. 
perfect winter day. <laughs> California. So glad I took my own advice, got out, rode something new. That was just about 21 miles. Not bad at all. Good climbing, about 3,000 feet of climbing. Just got to see a lot. And I think there's a lot more out here too with the little single tracks that connect to other bits and pieces. Good on ya, Redding. Well, I was gonna go get uh, some local food at one of the local places, but apparently nobody's wearing masks anymore here in Redding. So I'm going to McDonald's and I'm going to order on the app and they're gonna bring it to my car and I'm going to go home. If you find yourself on Interstate 5 doing a long road trip going north, going south, it's worth the stopover in Redding. It's not far off the highway. Check it out. Get a good little bit of trail riding in. And most importantly, do me a favor, go ride something new. And maybe I'll see you on the trail.